Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. So today we are uh, we will continue to, to solve the end of chapter chapter four problems, and the very, uh, the very first problem that we are going to solve for today is four dash fifty five, which is about the arithmetic gradients. So this problem for each cash flow diagram in part A through D, we are required to compute the present value of the cash flows. Um, so for the case A, so if you look at the period by period change amount here, it is positive 25. Right, twenty-five dollars. So this given cash flow can be broken into two components: one for the uniform annual series, and another for an arithmetic gradient series. Right. So let me read through the cash flow diagram first. This is the problem four dash. 55 and case A. So the given cash flow diagram is like this. This is the W. And 25 at the end of period 1. And 50 at the end of period 2. And 75, then the period 3, and then 100, and then the period 4, right? And the given interest rate we are going to use is 10%. And this cash flow can be broken into two components, one for the uniform annual series and another for an arithmetic gradient series. So let's say for uniform annual series We have equal amount of 25, right? And let's say this is the W1. And for the arithmetic gradient series, we have W2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 25, and then at the end of period 2, we have 25. At the end of period 3, we have 50. At the end of period 4, we have 75, right? So this is the amount of G. This is 2G, and this is the 3G, right? In such case, original pres present sum W can be obtained by W1 plus W2, right? W1, W2. How do you get W1? Uniform annual series of $25 over four periods. So P given A, 10% over four periods plus this arithmetic gradient series with G equals 25, right? So it's 25 times P given G, 10% over four periods, right? Then 
remember that the four periods arithmetic gradient series has only four minus one, which is three positive cash flows, right? So what is this? P given A. Ten percent over four periods, three point one seven. This is the three point one seven zero and P given G ten percent over four periods is 4.378. This is the 4.378. Okay. So, how much is that? This is the 3.170. This is the 4.378. Okay. So this is going to be $188.70, okay? Okay, then what about B? How to get the value of X here? So again, if you look at the period by period change amount, how much is that? It's $100, positive $100. So again, we may use the concept of arithmetic gradient series here. Okay. However, in the arithmetic gradient series, only the first period has zero cash flow. And first non-zero cash flow occurs at the end of period two. Is that correct? So if I set X prime at the end of first period, then the corresponding positive cash flow can be converted to an equivalent single payment X prime, right? And then this X prime can be converted to x at the end of period zero. That's what I'm going to do. So let's redraw the cash flow diagram first. So problem 4-55, case B. So this is the given cash flow. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And 10% interest rate. And this is the value of x, right? So if I start, X prime at the end of period one. And this positive cash flow can be converted to an equivalent single payment, which is X, X prime here. And then again, X prime will be converted to X. Okay? That's what I'm going to do. So first, how to get x prime? That's going to be arithmetic gradient of 100, right? Because the period by period change amount is positive 100. 
So 100 times P given G, 10%, right? Over how many periods? One to five, four periods, right? And 10% P given G over four periods is 4.378. This factor value is 4.378, okay? So that's going to be four, 437 dollars and eight cents, okay? Now we need to convert x prime to equivalent to equivalent present sum of x, right? So X would be $437.08, 80 cents, times P given F, 10% over one period, right? So P given F, 10% over one period is 0 0.9091. This is point nine zero nine one. Okay. So how much is that? That's going to be $398, okay? That's the value of X here. Of course, these two procedures can be combined together. So X is 100 times P given G, 10% over a four period times P given F, 10% over one period, right? Which is exactly the same as this two procedure, right? Next, is question C. So, obviously, this problem, this cash flow has a negative, I mean, the, the not the negative, it has the de decline gradient, right? So if you look at the period by period change amount, how much is that? Is negative $100. So the given cash flow can be broken into two components again. So problem... 4-55 case C this is Y and 300 200 and 100 Zero, one, two, three. Okay, and we are using ten percent of interest rate. So we identified arithmetic gradient amount is negative one hundred. Right, change. I mean, the period by period change amount is negative one hundred. So in this case, if we take out. 300 so that we can 
have uniform series of three hundred dollars and then let's set this value is equal to y sub one then what is left over another for the arithmetic gradient series okay Let's say this is y2, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Here, at the end of period 2, how much is do you have? 200 minus 300, which is negative 100. Okay. Likewise, at the end of period 3, 100 minus 300, which is negative 200. So, obviously, this y is equal to y1 plus y2, right? y is equal to y1 plus y2. And what is this? y1 is equal to 300 times p given a. Right? And 10% over 3 periods. And how to get y2? Arithmetic gradient of negative 100, right? Times p given g, 10% over 3 years. Just keep in mind that three periods of arithmetic gradient series has only three minus one, which is two positive, actually two non-zero cash flows. Okay. So what is this value? P given A over three periods. That is 2.487, 2.487, and what about this? P given G over three periods, 4.378. Now it's 2, yeah, 2.329, I'm sorry, 2.329. Okay, then how much is this? So this value the first term is $746.10. And the second term is negative value because of we have negative gradient, arithmetic gradient, right? So this is the two, negative $232 and 90 cents. So Y is going to be $513 and 20 cents. So this is the answer for part C. Okay, then what about 
part D. So here we may think of the given cash flow as the sum of single payments at the end of period two and an arithmetic gradient series with g equals 50. Okay? So this is the problem four dash fifty five part D. Let me and let me redraw the cash flow diagram again. This is the Z zero one two and three hundred we have hundred and we have fifty here and you're going to use ten percent of interest rate okay so what I'm going to do is we're gonna have two cash flow Break this cash flow will be broken into these two cash flow. Zero, one, two, three. So we have one hundred. And what is left over? Zero, one, two, three. We have fifty and hundred. So right here, this original cash flow has been broken into these two components. One for the single payment. I'm sorry, at the end of the single payment at the end of period one and an arithmetic gradient series with g equals 50 in this case okay and let's say this is the g sub one and this is the g sub two Then, how do we get G value? G equal to G1 plus Z2, Which is equal to 100 times P given F, 10% over one period, plus 50 times P given G, 10% over how many periods? Three periods, right? So what is this factor value? P given F, 0 0.9091. And what about this? 2.329. So this is going to be 90.91.
And how about this? It's going to be 11.645, right? No, 116.45, sorry. So what is this? It's going to be 207.36, dollars and 36 cents. And alternatively, alternatively, this given cash flow can be considered as a uniform series of $100 minus a single payment of $50 at the end of periods two. Is that right? So. Here's the another method. Let's say this is the method two, method two. So what you can do is this cash flow can be broken into this two component. Zero, one, two, three, zero, one, Three. And then we have fifty. Okay. Yeah. So basically, that there is the uniform series of. 100 minus a single payment of $50 at the end of at the end of period 2 is that correct so let's say this is the g sub 1 this is the g sub 2 let's say g1 prime and g2 prime okay then z would be g1 prime minus G2 prime. Is that correct? So, in such case, 100 times P given A, 10% over three periods, minus 50 times P given F, 10% over two periods, right? So how much is that? P given A over three periods, 2.487, 2.487. P given F over two periods is 0.8264. 8264 this is okay so of course this would be very close to um, what is the value we have 207.36 maybe Okay, and also maybe um, also you may think of this given cash flow as a series of uh, three single payments F. So in such case, the given cash flow can be broken into three components like this. Let's say this is the G1 double prime, G2 
double prime, and then G3 double prime. Okay. Then we have 100. Fifty and then hundred. Okay. Of course, the original value of Z can be obtained by summation of all these three Z values G one double prime, Z two double prime, and G three double prime. Oops. Okay, so what is that? 100 times P given F, 10% over one period. 50 times P given F, 10% over two period. And then 100 times P given F, 10% over three periods. So, how do you get those values? P given F, 0 0.9091. This is the 0.8264. And then, this is the 0.7513. Of course, these values should be very close to uh, what you already had. How much was that? Okay, it's almost same as 207.36. It should be very close to this value. There might be slightly uh, different. Okay, so of course, for any given cash flow, you can you can solve the the problem with several different uh, methodologies. And I just want to show you uh, three different ways to to get the answer, which is Z value here. Okay. Um, hold on a second, please. So next next problem that we are going to solve. Is about problem four dash sixty eight. Okay, so council members of a small town have decided that the earth levy that protects the town flooding should be rebuilt and strengthened. The town engineer estimates that the cost of the work at the end of the first year will be $85,000. He estimates that in subsequent years, the annual repair cost will decline by $10,000, making the second year cost $75,000 the third year, $65,000, and so forth. And the council members want to know what the equivalent present cost is for the first five years of repair work if interest rate is 4%. Okay, so we are working on Problem number 
4-68 है and here we have timeline 0 1 2 3 4 up to 5 years right okay and the cost of work at the end of the first year is $85,000 right so let's say at the end of year 1 is 85k and in subsequent years the annual repair cost will decline by ten thousand dollars so at the end of year two it's gonna be 75k at the end of year three 65k at the end of year four 55k at the end of year 5 it's going to be 45k is that right so if you look at this cash flow diagram the period by period change amount is negative $10,000 right so we can implement the arithmetic gradient series right here with g equals negative 10,000 negative 10k right and we want to know the present sum of p and what is the per the interest rate okay interest rate that we are going to use is four percent so this cash flow diagram will be broken into two one for the annual uniform series uniform series and another for the arithmetic gradient series right so these are the one for uniform series of 85k right and what is being left over so one two three four five so one two three four five at the end of period two it's gonna be negative 10,000, negative 20,000, negative 30,000, and then negative 40,000, right? So let's add, this is the piece of one, piece of two, okay? Then P, can be obtained by P1 plus P2. Yeah. So here P equal to P1 plus P2. It's going to be 85,000 times P given A, 4% over 5 periods, plus the arithmetic gradient of negative 10,000. So negative 10,000 times P given G, right? 4% over same 5 periods. Is that right? So 
So we are looking for 4% of interest rate. So if you look at our tax page 606, 606, then P given A over five periods is 4.452. 4.452, this is. What about this? P given G over five periods. That is 8.555. Okay. So, how much is that? So the present value of P would be 292,870 dollars. Okay? So this is the problem 4-46. Okay, then next let's consider problem 4-70. Okay, so a debt of $5,000 can be repaid with interest at 8% by the following payments. The payment at the end of the fifth year is shown as X. Then we'd like to know how much it is. Okay, how much is X? So let's draw the cash flow diagram first based on this cash flow table. Okay. So this is the problem number four dash. 70. So, that's a five thousand dollar can be repaid like this at the end of period one, 500, at the end of period two, 1,000, at the end of period three, 15, uh, I'm sorry, 150, at the end of period four, that be 200. And then at the end of period 5, how much is that? Okay? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the interest rate that you are going to use is 8%. Okay? So with the 8% interest rate per year, um, okay, so what I'm going to do is, here, the first four payments can be broken into two components, one for the uniform series of five, $500, and another for an arithmetic gradient series of G equal to $50 because the period by period change amount in this case is $50, right? So here let's 
going to say I have p sub sorry p sub 1 and oh, no, maybe let's say this is the p prime okay uh, let me use new worksheet here so what I'm going to do is just consider the first four payments, okay? Two, three, four, five hundred. Sorry, is one thousand and fifteen hundred, two thousand. <laughs> Sorry about that. So this is the fifteen hundred and two thousand, right? Okay. Zero, one, two, three, four. Let's say this is the P prime. Then this can be broken down to these two components. One for the uniform series of five hundred dollars one two three four let's say this is the p1 prime and p2 prime here zero one two three four then we have five hundred thousand and fifteen hundred okay here G is five hundred all right so how'd you get this value P prime would be P1 prime plus P2 prime right How'd you get P1 prime? 500 times P given A, 8% over 4 period, plus P2 prime, arithmetic gradient of 500 times P given G, 8% over 4 periods, right? So what is this value? Eight percent P given A over four periods is three point three one two. And P given G over four periods is four point six five. Four point six five zero. Okay, so how much is, is this? So this is the $3,981, okay? So the first, uh, first four payments right here. The first four payments repay the present sum of P prime, which is $3,000 nine hundred eighty one dollars okay so the first four payments
will repay a present sum of $3,981. Okay? Uh, it's very small. Is, is it hard to see? So I've written down here the first four payments will repay a present sum of $3,000 and $981. Okay? So how'd you get this unpaid portion of the $5,000? the unpaid portion of $5,000 can be obtained by $5,000, which is this, right? Minus what is just obtained, 3000 $981, which is $1,019. Okay. So here, This $1,019 need to be converted to an equivalent future sum of money X, right? So the X should be 1,900 times F given P, right? and 8% over 5 period. So how much is this? F given P over 5 periods. That is 1.469. This is the 1.469. So the X would be This is going to be $1,496.91. Okay? So this is the answer. This is the value of X at the end of period 5. Okay? Okay, then uh, next problem that you are going to solve is problem 4-60. Actually, this problem uh, has been selected from the previous edition, 10th edition. Okay? But you don't need to, uh, you don't need to buy 10th edition, of course. because I provide all the problem description like here, okay? So a man makes an investment every three months 
at a nominal, in, nominal annual interest rate of 28%, compounded quarterly. His first investment was $100, followed by investments increasing $20 each three months. So the second investment was $120, and the third investment is $140, and so on. If he continues to make this series of investments for a total of 20 years, what will be the value of the investments at the end of that time? Okay, so let's draw the cash flow diagram first. We are working on problem 4-6 from the 10th edition. So he makes an investment every three months at a nominal interest rate of 28%, but compounded quarterly, which means the bank pays how much, how many, how many percentage? The bank pays 7%, which is 28% divided by 4. Because there are four uh, quarters in a year, right? So the bank pays 7% quarterly. So 7% quarterly. And his first investment is $100. First investment is $100, followed by investments increasing $20 each three months. So here, $120, $140, and so on. And he continues to make this series of investments for a total of 20 years. So, one, two, three. So, how many quarters do we need to consider? How many quarters in 20 years? 80 quarters, right? So the last payment should be made at the end of 80th, 80th quarter. And 79th right here, and zero. And we want to know this p-value, present sum of p at the end of period zero. Is that right? Here, what we know is arithmetic gradient is $20, okay? So this given cash flow can be broken into two different components, okay? One for the uniform series, another for an arithmetic gradient series. So, here, one for the uniform series. Zero, one, two, three, up to 80 here we take out $100 from each period to make uniform series right 
that case, let's set equal to p prime plus arithmetic gradient series. Let's set this present sum equal to p double prime. Zero, one, two, three, and eighty. And then starting from second period, we have twenty, forty, and sixties, and so on, right? So we have certain value here. So how do you get this? Original p value, present sum, p equal to p prime plus p double prime, right? So how do you get p prime? It's going to be 100 times p given a 7% right? over 80 quarters plus this arith arithmetic gradient series with g equals 20 p given g 7% over 80 periods, 80 quarters. So, seven percent. So we need to look at our text page 610. P given A over 80 periods is 14.222 and p given g is 198.075 so how much is that? That's going to be $5,383.70, okay? Is this the answer? No. We need to get the future value at the end of 80 quarters of this, right? So the future value at the end of 80 quarters so times F given P, right? 7% over 80 periods.